Hi, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and we're starting Section 6, which is all about the normal ECG and how to start to pick apart what you're looking at. All right, I want to get out of my soapbox a little bit. I created the ECG Academy because I've been teaching ECGs to people for decades, nurses, doctors, technicians, and I know what's important and I know what's not important, but uh, the most important thing about trying to learn something from a video like this is that you have to be able to see clearly. And I've created these videos all in high definition, and I just want you to see something. This is a, a an ECG that I got off the internet, and it's something that you see typically on an ECG website. Now let's zoom in a little bit. I just want you to see what, what this actually looks like. Um, I think you can, you can tell that this is actually a very low resolution scan of, of an ECG and a lot of the details are lost. Uh, I just want to show you what, what I've done is created ECGs in high resolution, um, done scans of ECGs that are in my own library, and I just want you to see the difference in the fidelity. I mean, you can see every little detail in these ECGs. In fact, look at the pattern of squares on the paper. Um, compare that with um, with what I showed you before. Uh, I, I think even um, on a small viewing window on your desktop, you can see that there's quite a difference in resolution. So, so much for my little political statement. Um, I hope you'll subscribe to ECG Academy and let me help you become an ECG expert by watching all these videos from beginning to end, and then subscribe to the weekly Chalk Talks, which will help you get used to reading more difficult tracings, give you lots of practice, because these will be real tracings that I've gotten from my practice from the hospital and from real patients, and I'll go through them with you at levels varying all the way from the very basic up to extremely advanced. So having said all that, let's get back to looking at ECGs as one of the most important tests you can do on a patient with heart disease. And this applies, of course, to cardiac monitors that you'll find on an ambulance, in the emergency room, in the coronary care unit. And my purpose here is to make sure you know exactly what you're looking at and get the diagnosis right. Now, what I've shown you here is an ECG that was done on a typical rolling cart type of machine. This machine carries with it pre-printed paper. Now, the paper here has that pink box pattern printed on it, and either pens or another mechanism will imprint the ECG on there. This isn't the only type of ECG that you can see. There are other kinds of ECG machines that will use uh, the color papers. You can see here you've got an imprinted green square checkerboard pattern with the ECG printed with black ink. And then if you work in a hospital, most of the telemetry units and intensive care units use paper that's printed on a thermal printer. And you get these strips that are created by a thermal printer and all the little gray dots are actually printed by the printer itself. But keep in mind that thermal printer paper fades with time. And if you want it to be part of the permanent record, it needs to be either scanned into the medical records department or photocopied. Thermal printer paper is not a permanent record. Let's get rid of some of these and take a closer look at what's actually on this piece of paper. Most of the commercial ECG machines will print a bunch of information on the page, information that will be very valuable to you. For example, uh, identification, the patient's name, sometimes the medical record number will be over here, the patient's age. And then you'll have basic measurements here. Uh, for example, this uh, reports out the heart rate in beats per minute, that's 88. Uh, the intervals are measurements that the computer will come up with. Um, we'll talk about those in the next video. And the measured axes, P, Q, R, S, and T in degrees, which we'll talk about in the intermediate course, and some other measurements of size and so forth. Now, on the paper, you'll also see information printed in terms of the standardization, which I'll talk about in the next video. And there are also these standardization marks. And of course, each lead will have its own label, one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF, and so forth. Okay, here's another example of an ECG that was done on a different manufacturer. But it's basically got the same information on it. You got patient ID over here. You have measurements of one kind or another over here. This happens to be ST segment measurements because this came off of a stress test machine. 
And then at the bottom, you have information about the standardization in terms of this paper speed and the calibration size. So we'll go into more of this in detail in subsequent talks. But the one thing I want you to understand is that regardless of what you actually read on the ECG in terms of what the computer prints out, you always have to remember one thing. Never believe anything you read on an ECG, whether it's written by a nurse or a technician or whether it's actually printed on the cardiogram in terms of an interpretation. Um, here, sometimes the computer will write the uh, normal sinus rhythm and so on and so forth. Often the computer readout is incorrect and needs to be overread by a cardiologist. And between you and me, it's surprising how often the official reading of an electrocardiogram is not entirely accurate. So keep all that in mind as we go through these videos and I teach you how to become an ECG expert. Stay tuned for the next chapter when I talk about the size and duration of the calibration marks and how to actually begin to measure the intervals using a pair of calipers. For the ECG Academy, this is Dr. Nick. Thanks for watching.